Good morning everybody and welcome once again to my humble abode. Today I'd like to go and have a show you the, the farm. I've changed it from a managed farm to a manual farm. And I've also um, been working on the recyclers and the ignis extruders in order to um, make that U matter a little bit faster. So I'll go and show you that. First of all, I'm just going to kill this skeleton that's over here somewhere. There it is. Get him out of the way. I saw him burning. Right, that's just... Uh, Turn on the jetpack and fly to the farm. So what I did with the farm was I reconfigured it and basically ignore, remove the, uh, the ender lilies because it is not really necessary. I haven't removed them physically. I've just changed it so that we use it now for um, rubber. So we've got these rubber wood trees here. So that they should be producing rubber and the rest of it's the same. So here was a... Uh, Instead of being an arboretum, is now an orchard. Crops are still the same um, over here, and the peat bog is still the same over here. In fact, it looks like I've run out of peat bog, or oh, it's been putting the wrong things in. Let's go. Oops, I shouldn't stand on the end of this, should I? I should go down here. Oops, oh, another skeleton, another skeleton. Let's just sort you out. Some bones for some fertilizer, perhaps. And we'll have to turn off the jetpack when I go down the ladder, it's a bit difficult otherwise. If I can get in, yes, there we go. So, what I did with the farm is I reconfigured it into a manual farm, and sure enough, I've run out of peat bog. So, let's go and get some more. I think I have some more in this chest. No, I don't. I need sand and dirt. What else do we need? Sand and dirt. Oh, we just need sand basically. So I've got 16 bog earth, which isn't enough, but we'll put those in here for the time being. And we shall go and get some more sand from the workshop. Quickly. It's over here, and if I haven't got enough, there is something strange here. I just can't get over it. It's sort of a, an invisible step. Let's play. Oh, let's take three stacks of sand, that should be plenty. And then just jump back to the farm. Here we go. And it was in this cyclic, cyclic assembler here, wasn't it? So now I've got plenty of that, and of course, I've now run out of. What else do we need? Ah, watering, water cans. And maybe that's why I've got this here. So I can make some water cans using tin ingots. Okay, back to the workshop. And pick up a stack of tin, tin ingots. Here we are. And back to the farm. There's a, there's a recipe in here. I'm sure there's a recipe to make these, which there is. Schematic. Yes, I did. Three tin ingots, so let's put some tin ingots in here. We've got oh, rather a lot of those. Let's take that out of the way and put it back in the peat bog using the water can. Now we need to fill this up. So, oh, fortunately, I've got here a, a, a tank. I don't know if it's got much in seven buckets. That should be sufficient, at least for seven. Let's just put that down here. Where's my cans? Here we are. And all I need to do on these is simply right click the bucket and they'll get filled up with water. And I think these stack actually, so let's have a look. They do. So we can put those in there and sure enough, some more peat bog. So it runs out of water, of course. So put those in there we should have plenty for the time being so let's put those into the farm I don't need so much dirt in there 
and put the dirt back in here so we've got dirt for next time. Okay, so all we need now is some water, which is easy enough to get hold of. What else have I got in here? Uh huh. Do I have? No, I don't. Take this one, shift right click, pick it up. Right, so that was the first thing. And here we have what I was doing with the so I click uh, Ignis Extrude I made a second one and put it beside first of all I had these touching but that was a mistake because what was happening was Ignis Extrude was working as expected putting down cobblestone into the uh, recycler but the recycler was sending it to the other recycler a scrap to the other recycler so that was then getting recycled again so I was losing about half the scrap what also I did is I changed this one to be a reinforced uh, igneous extruder and by doing that we we'll probably do this one and what then that allowed me to do is to add some two augments so for speed so I doubled the speed quadrupled the speed but also increased the energy to 100% so now it uses 8 RF per tick which is okay and as I also added some overclockers in here probably too many but uh, better than none and the same with this one in here in fact I probably could take one of those out because this doesn't really seem to help if it's got uh, not enough supply coming in and it's certainly not getting full straight away in and straight away out uh, so the ejector is still working fine and here I've just got a, an item duct with a servo at the bottom which I can show you from here and the server just pushes it into the cyclic assembler to produce the um, the scrap boxes, which look like that. In fact, you don't, you're getting they're going through using so much so quickly these days. You don't see what's happening. And here it goes into the mass fabricator, and it's actually got eight scraps, nine scrap boxes in here at the moment, which is great because then that allows it to go out through here into this tank so now we have 154 which is enough to make another iridium ore which is not very much ah did I say that I have to thank uh, MavRx for telling me what these these slots and in, the, in the advanced solar panels are these are for charging things so for example I could put in this resonant flux capacitor and it would charge it up but because I've got the wireless charger in the in the workshop or in the floor above the workshop I don't tend to use those but it will be useful for doing this um, this redstone energy cell here I could charge that up because this one is being used for um, the fertilizer so we could sort of let's go and put it into one of these I'll be careful which tool I use, I don't want to flick it off. Here we are. So now you see this is probably receiving a little bit of charge. It'll take a while. And it certainly used up all the existing storage in here. So that's 11.9. But I won't do that because uh, it'll take all of the power out for the other one. So let's put that back in again. On the end of this, if I can, that is. There we go. And that's configured incorrectly. Never mind, I shall reconfigure that quickly. That wants to be the front. I'm not sure where the front is. I'll tell you what, we'll rust up, turn it around. So this is the front. There we are. No, that's correct. Orange is the output, so this will be getting power again. And of course, this thing, oops, which I didn't want to do. We're getting starting to get full of uh, industrial fertilizer. Let's remove some of that and sort the rest. And then put the industrial fertilizer into the, uh, into the system. Actually, I could do that twice, can't I? And the system will then go and sort it. 
So we're busy making iridium water in, to produce these iridium plates. What else? I, I don't know whether I've shown you this, but in this world, it's a, it's a multi-user server world, and I do have some small children. This is uh, Dommy Vommy's box. He's nine years old, and he likes doing sort of fighting and grinding mobs. And behind here we have Tati Batty. She's nearly, she'll be seven next next week, and she likes uh, building building things really. And she has she finds out how to make juices. She makes more than one and all sorts of things. And she made these slaves, and not just one or two, but loads of them. And made uh, I she made some televisions, mostly deco craft. And she, but she did actually make the uh, the first armor stand, so that was very good. What else do we want to do? Well, I've also been working on the. Uh, Oh, it's gone night. Let's just have a quick sleep while it's night time. So that the uh, solar panels can work more efficiently and produce more UU matter. What else I did is I went to the quarry and I've been actually doing some micromanagement on the quarry. It's, it's produced a lot of diamond ore. And actually rather a lot of diamond ore in this particular case. I'm going to have a quick look. Go back to the workshop. I think I've had about uh, 20 or 30 diamond ores from this particular quarry. The previous one I almost had zero, so uh, those, those are dense ores. So the standard ores are in here. As you see now I've got, uh, oh my goodness, that's quite a few, 80 diamond ores. So that gives me 160 diamonds when I put those through the pulverizer. So we're doing pretty well at the moment. And as soon as this quarry is finished, then I'll go and build another nether quarry. Seems like a good, a good balance to do one nether quarry and then do one um, overland quarry. I haven't done what I haven't done yet is I haven't done any nether um, twilight forest stuff. I've been thinking about it, and I did pick up this book here, which is the Notes on the Pointed Tower. And this is the, basically the book about uh, the lift tower. So it says an explorer's note book gnawed from them by monsters. I've begun examining the strange aura surrounding the tower. The bricks of the tower are protected by a curse stronger than any I've seen before. And basically what it's trying to say is it comes down here. Ah, breakthrough. I sighted a huge snake-like monster. That'll be the Naga. Decorated it courtyard. Nearby I picked up a worn down discarded green scale. The magic of the scale seems to have curse breaking properties I need but the magic is too dim. I may need to acquire another fresher specimen directly from the creature. So I guess that means we have to go and kill a Naka. Well I have actually been by the nether portal. We do have a twilight forest portal. And a massive big slime. Let's get out the way of that thing. Or oh, use this one. There we go. Blue slime. Right. And right beside um, the portal, we have actually two. Um, oh, I've got my get back on there. Two fortresses. And they're literally sort of like one is here. And there's another one right behind it, I think. Let's just have a look at the map. Go up a bit higher. And if I press the backslash key, I get the map in the middle. Uh, in fact, let's do, not do that. Let's put the, press the J key so you can see. So here's one fortress. At the, and right in the middle, and right between the two fortresses. And I've also found a Naga here. So if I can quickly have a look around and look at that Naga. Quite a lot. That's Naga 2. Naga 1's over here. It's only 300 metres away, so it won't take very long. Especially if I change the uh, f flight to using a jet... Oh, I must have moved it. Put it over here. Using a hand glider. I'll turn off hover mode. Uh, 
And when I press shift, I just rock it down so it And here we have an Argo. And there's three of them in the in the area, not too far away. So I think the first job will be to kill this. In fact, let's go and do that now. I don't know if I can kill it, that is. Yes, it's going down slowly. Health is going down. Yes, yeah, it gets smaller. How goes smaller does it when it gets uh, starts to die? There we are. What do we get from there? Turn the saber. So we got one minute yellow heart, one naga scale. Oh, ten naga scales and naga trophy. So there we have it. And now, while I'm here, I shall quickly fly back to base. Get back back on again. And the portal screen, so there we are. Press five. And just quickly go down there. I'm not sure if I have put in here a... So what will happen now this fortress is before it's protected by the yellow and you can't get and do anything with it in fact let's do this turn that off you couldn't damage it in any shape i probably should have shown you before i killed the knock i shouldn't I? in any shape or form so if we go down now and to use the, the the wonderful axe on some of these uh not the axe the pickaxe see now it's no problem at all, I can break the, this without the slightest problems. There's a chest and there's a creeper, let's just deal with the creeper. Let's just do the chest, oh a few bits and pieces in there. An empty map and some books and some stairs, okay. Right, that's for another day. For now it's time to go back home. No, I don't have any. I don't have a travel anchor here yet. I shall do that first of all, I think. Let's just drop down quickly. Oh, let's put in a travel anchor. I'm sure I've got a travel anchor on somewhere. Probably in the knapsack. Yes, I have. So let's put that in number three. I can't do that, huh? Let's take those out. I think that would happen. Right, here we are. So let's put the travel anchor in here and say portal. And it's public. If the, if the children are forgetting well. And of course, number two, back to the workshop. And what else did we get? We got a Naga trophy, one of the flowers I picked up from that one, and a map. I don't know what's on this map, let's have a look. Ah. Oh, so that builds a map of where I am at the moment. Oh, isn't that cool? Oops, back to game. How do I get rid of this? Escape didn't work. Number one, yes. Oh, I'd have to use E. So now it's so it's now my, a map of the, where we are at the moment, which is so uh, probably good. So I hope you enjoyed this little episode and a quick trip to the Twilight Forest. Until next time. Bye for now.